Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Joshua chapter 22. We're going to be starting in verse 11 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, in last lesson, we saw in uh, verses 1 through 9, uh, Joshua and the uh, leaders in, of Israel, they send off the two and a half tribes that they allow them to go back to their possession on the east side of the Jordan River. And so they go and they cross the Jordan River and then they build an altar in verse 10 of chapter 22. And now we come to verse 11 and actually verses 11 through 20 deal with the misunderstanding they the misunderstanding of the meaning of the altar now let's read verse 11 so they've gone to the jordan river they've crossed over the jordan river and they've built this altar and now we come to verse 11 and it says and the children of israel they heard say, Behold, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar over against the land of Canaan, in the borders of Jordan, at the passage of the children of Israel. Now, it seems that wherever they crossed the Jordan, that the people of the tribe of the land where they crossed had watched them cross and build this altar. And then they quickly went to Shiloh and they told Joshua. Now, it's possible also that when the two and a half tribes left Shiloh, that an escort was also provided for them to go with them, to escort them to the river of Jordan and to cross over the Jordan River. Uh, again, we don't know what happened. All we do, but it, it seems very likely that Joshua himself, nor the leaders of Israel, the leaders of the tribes of Israel, went with them when they went. They stayed pretty much in Shiloh. Uh, they heard about it. So someone had to tell them, whether it was the people of the, the tribe of the land that where they crossed or whether they had, like I said, an escort go with them to see them over. We don't know how they found out, but somehow they did find out that this altar was built. Now we come to verse 12 and it says here, And when the children of Israel heard about it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together in Shiloh uh, to go up to war against them. Now, this altar that was built showed that the tribes on the west side of Jordan, that was in the promised land, were still obedient to God's word. And they were ready to battle their own brethren for building an altar that seemingly was not approved by the high priest nor was it approved by God. So these tribes that were in the promised land, they uh, showed that they were still uh, hungry for God and the things of God, and they were standing up uh, for the things of God. It looks as if the tribes on the west of the Jordan would remain true to God's word for many years to come. But this would not this would not hold true. Only about listen, only about 19 years later, after this time, the hearts of the children of Israel would turn away from God and from his word. In Judges, let's read Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 2, verses 8 through 13. And it says here, And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being an hundred and ten years old. 
and they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath, uh, Timnath Herez, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gaash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, uh, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel, what did they do? As soon as this new generation, which did not know the Lord, and they did not see his works and his greatness, what did they do? And they forsook the Lord, God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and they followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord, and they served Baal and Ashtaroth. So, you know, they were, they, what, what this basically shows, what, it, what Joshua 2 basically shows us is that they were following a man. They weren't following God. They, they, were, they were following Joshua because Joshua was the leader. And now Joshua has passed away and the leaders of Israel have passed away. And this new generation, which did not know the Lord and they did not see his works and his wonders, now they grow up and, and they, are, they are turning their hearts away from God. They were following a man. You know, in Nehemiah, Nehemiah, let's read Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 17. Nehemiah 8, 17 says, And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity, they made booths, and they sat under the booths for since, listen, since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, unto, the, unto this day, the day in Nehemiah, unto this day, that, they had, that the children of Israel had not done so. They had not built, they had not observed the Feast of Tabernacles. And there was great gladness. So from the time of Joshua until the time of Nehemiah chapter 8, these children of Israel... They had not observed the tabernacle, the, the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, this portion of history took place. Listen, in Nehemiah chapter 8, that portion of history took place about a thousand years after Joshua chapter 22. So, for a thousand years, the children of Israel had not observed this Feast of Tabernacles. And therefore, what other feasts and duties had they stopped doing? As soon as Joshua died, their hearts went astray from God and from his laws. You know, that's kind of that's kind of the way it is with, with some people. They follow a man. They follow the the uh, the pastor, the the Bible study leader, the whoever, the Sunday school teacher, they they are influenced by them, and, and they like their preaching or they like whatever about them, and and they they they're encouraged because of that. They are a mentor, and then when that mentor either dies or falls away from God or moves to another uh, another location, then. What happened? Then they fall away. They fall away. Why? Because they never developed their own relationship with God themselves. And this is what the book of Joshua is all about. It's about us going in, leaving, leaving behind our wilderness, our immaturity, and entering into the promised land of maturity. And the promised land of maturity is a lesson that we need to be able to function with God ourselves. We need to be able to hear from God ourselves. And for a thousand years, for a thousand years, the children of Israel never observed the Feast of Tabernacles. And, and, and what other feasts, what other duties 
did did the children of Israel not not do because because you know they they fell away from God. Now let's read verses 13 and 14. And it says, And the children of Israel sent unto the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh into the land of Gilead. They sent Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, and with him ten princes of each, uh, of each chief house, a prince throughout all the tribes of Israel. And each one was an head of the house of their fathers among the thousands of Israel. Now, at at least at least they send an embassy to the two and a half tribes to confront them before before they wage war against them. They sent Phineas. Now, in my opinion, uh, again, <laughs> Phineas is kind of. I know you'll kind of laugh at this, but Phineas is kind of. To me, he's like a ninja priest. Phineas, well, if Phineas is the kind of guy where if you see him coming, you better start shaking in your boots. Because Phineas, he's he's a he gets right to it. Uh, we see it was listen. It was Phineas that stopped the anger of God from being poured out. In Numbers chapter 25, 25, verse 7. And here, Phineas is the one being sent by Joshua and the leaders of, uh, of the tribes of Israel to go and confront them. And, you know, here, it was in Numbers 25 when the, when the, the uh, uh, God had to judge the children of Israel because of what happened with Peor. And uh, they started... They started straying away from God. Twenty-four thousand people were uh, were killed, and but Phineas stops the killing uh, because some some young guy uh, grabs this Midianite woman. I believe it was Midianite woman, and he goes and basically proud, arrogant way goes to the by the temple and he takes this woman, this this Gentile woman, into his tent and Phineas. <laughs> Phineas, I, I can kind of see it now. I mean, Phineas is probably like at the tent, near the tent. And here comes this, this Jewish guy and he's got this Gentile woman and he kind of really doesn't care when anybody thinks I'm like proud and arrogant. And he walks by and uh, he takes this Gentile woman to his tent. And I think kind of Phineas is kind of like, he's like looking at the... Uh, that the tabernacle, and then he looks at the this this couple going by here, and it's like he doesn't he doesn't hesitate for a second. I mean, Phineas, he just doesn't say a word. He doesn't hesitate at all. He grabs a spear, a javelin, and he goes to that tent, and woof! He kills the man, and he stabs the woman through the stomach. I mean, he <laughs> he just gets right to it. That he doesn't have to ask questions. He just does it. And, you know, so, and, and that's what stopped the anger. That's what stopped God's anger. And God promised Phineas, he says, you know, and listen to this. God promised Phineas, he says, you know what? Because Phineas did that, that there will always be a priest. There will always be a priest from the line, from the descendants of Phineas that will serve before me. And you know what? You know who Ezra, a thousand, listen, a thousand years later, a thousand years later, in the, who know who what Ezra was? Ezra was a descendant of Phineas and he was a priest. Oh yeah, God held his promise. And because Phineas defended the integrity of God, that he had defended the righteousness and the holiness of God. Yeah, when Phineas, when you see Phineas coming, you better start inspecting yourself. You better start thinking, what have I ever done? And your boots better be shaken because Phineas is coming. He he don't he don't he's not pulling any punches. He's gonna get get right to it. This embassy was well qualified to expose the altar as an act of sin, if in fact it was sinful 
and to help those two and a half tribes to repent if they did need to repent. Now, let's read verses 15 and 16. And it says, And they came unto the children of Reuben, and to the children of Gad, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, unto the land of Gilead. And they spake with them, saying, Thus saith the whole congregation of the Lord, What trespass is this that you have committed against the God of Israel, to turn away this day from following the Lord, in that you have builded you an altar, that you might rebel this day against the Lord. Now, you know, presumption can be a very divisive and a very devastating thing in a relationship. How would you feel if someone judged your heart by your actions? Yes, a Christian needs to stay away from all appearance of evil. But sometimes we may go places or do things on the outside that can look questionable or even it may look sinful. Now, God knows our hearts and if these things really are sinful, but we can't see, but we, God sees our heart, but we can't see people's hearts. We don't know what they're really thinking or, or the reason why they did what they did or why they went where they went. But God knows it. Listen, we must be very careful to not quickly judge another person's actions or their words until we ask them first why they did or why they said what they did. Presumption is a form of judging. We think we know we, that we have enough information that allows us to make a final decision. And then we accuse them of something that isn't true. Instead of going to God, who knows all things, we trust in our own assessment of the situation, and then we come to a conclusion. This is exactly what happened in Joshua chapter 9 with the Gibeonites. The children of Israel looked at, they looked at their clothes, and they looked at their food and their wine bottles. And they thought that the evidence was overwhelming and that they didn't need to go to God for counsel. If the, listen, if the children of Israel would have asked the two and a half tribes first, then they wouldn't have had to gather all the army together. But because they didn't bother to ask, ask the two and a half tribes first, they called all the soldiers uh, on the west side of Jordan to leave their inheritance and to stop building their houses and barns and come and fight a battle. They, had, they, they called them to come and possibly fight a battle that never actually did happen. It wasn't even necessary. You know, it was a false alarm. Can you imagine? Hey, hey guys, come on. I, listen, we know that just a couple weeks ago, you guys were sent to your property, and I know you've got your house probably half built, but we need you to come here because we got a problem with the, with the other tribes there on the other side of the Jordan River, <laughs> right? And, and now, now they have to leave their property. The soldiers have to come back all to Shiloh, and now they got to get ready and armed and wait for wait for this the embassy to come back and tell them whether they're going to be fighting their brethren or not. Again, it's all because they never bothered to ask them first. When we presume we can call we can cause that other person to we can cause the other person to be offended and possibly to lose a friendship. This is why Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 5, verses 1 and 2, what he told us to be more ready to hear 
and to not and to not be rash or quick with our mouth and also to what to let our words on earth be few James says in chapter 1 and verse 19 that we should be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to act swift what swift to hear slow to speak and slow to anger if you see a christian or someone doing something questionable learn to ask first ask first let them have the opportunity to explain themselves now these two and a half tribes could have easily got offended and angry with Phineas and the others that came with him and rushed off and stayed separate from the tribes on the west side of the Jordan River. Now, let's read uh, verse 16. In verse 16, they make strong accusations without having consulted God or asking the, the two and a half tribes a question. Let's read 16 again. Thus saith the whole congregation, of the Lord. Listen, what does he say? What trespass is this that you have committed against the God of Israel? Well, how does they know it's a trespass? They don't know it's a trespass. They haven't asked them to turn away this day from following the Lord in that you have built an altar that that you what? That you might rebel this day against the Lord. How do they know they're rebelling? They don't know they're rebelling. They're coming to conclusions. That they're, they're presuming that the that what they're saying is true, but they don't know. They never ask God, and they never ask them. All right, we're going to continue on in verse 17 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.